point that you realize, hey, this is, I got to be serious about this and I really got to dedicate my life to something different? I can tell you when it was, uh, it was December of 1997 after I'd fought John Lober. Uh, and I just, you know, it was my first real mixed martial arts fight. And I came from a very sporting background in Pancrase. And I, I didn't want to hurt people. I had John's leg and I broke some bones and he wouldn't give up. And, and I had his arm and I didn't want to break it. And then I, I just realized that, you know, if I was going to pick up the sword and I was going to be a pro fighter, I had to, I had to break things if that was the game. You know, I had to go, I had to see it through. Um, and I, I never really felt good about it. I still don't feel good about it. I don't want to hurt anybody, but I want to win. And if the rules of the game say, I got to pop that lock, then I got to do it. I was never a, a violent person. I was never, a, you know, somebody who got in trouble for fighting. I got in trouble because I didn't know what to do with my time. And, you know, I had drug problems and I was a juvenile delinquent and I was locked in closets and I grew up, you know, really, really rough. And I didn't know there was another way to live until I got into mixed martial arts. And then I realized that there's a much better way to live. You know, for me, it's an opportunity to influence a generation of people and to do something really positive. And, I know we're doing it by kicking people's asses, but there's something deeper than that. And, you know, unfortunately, I think the sport has been promoted as something other than, you know, a weight, weight of your life. You know, it's promoted as a way to get chicks and tattoos and look cool in a cage. But I, I always thought it was bigger than that. You know, somebody provided the opportunity for me, and I want to do that for as many people as possible. And it's hard to see past all the other stuff and to see what we're really, truly doing. That's why I keep doing it. I want as many people as possible to, to say, hey, you know, I don't. I don't need to go get in a gang, I don't need to go do something dumb, you know, go in the gym and work out, you know, here's my community and, you know, here's my little church. I just like to challenge myself and some days it's just getting to work on time and some days it's getting through sparring with Clint and some days it's, you know, fighting Nick Diaz. Uh, and to me it's, it's just a, an amazing way to live. What does Nick Diaz bring to the, uh, the table in this fight that you have to watch out for? Well, for Nick I got to watch out for his length both on the stand up and on the ground. Length always gives me troubles because uh, you know I'm a small explosive fighter, so I work on very short, very very tight angles. Nick Diaz is gonna be standing up straight as a board. His feet work is terrible. Uh, he's, he's only gonna be able to get off at somebody that's eye level with him. So Frank should be able to manipulate himself around. Like I said, he should beat the hell out of the kid. He's an accomplished jiu-jitsu guy, so I always gotta worry about submission holds. And you know, on the stand-up, he's willing to throw him, and if you're willing to throw him, it counts for something. So, you know, I don't, I don't think he has a lot of power, but he's got good reach, and he's got, uh, you know, pretty good range, and he's not afraid to throw him. Uh, you know, Nick Diaz, when I saw him, he was probably about 185, maybe 190 pounds. He was definitely bigger than I was. I don't cut weight. You know, I'm from the old school. I'm, I'm always within a, a pound or two of my fighting weight uh, because that's where I feel comfortable. So I just think, you know, the sport has changed the, with striking and with, with uh, you know, with the rounds, the time limits, and stuff, uh, weight matters and size matters. You know, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't believe in cutting weight. So, this will be the first time I've ever, <clears throat> you know, missed a meal to make a weight class. I think it's going to be a real fast and real furious and somewhat dangerous fight. Uh, you know, but as long as I, you know, stick to my game and keep tight, you know, I, I'm going to knock Diaz out. I'm going to smash him. He seems to have made this pretty personal. Um, seems like you have fun with it. Like, <laughs> what, what's going on? What's that kind of dynamic? I don't think I think he takes everything personal, but I think I did when I was that age too. So I think it's just you know, I mean there is a flip side. I, you know, I did knock out his coach and his teacher, and you know, I mean that would certainly upset me if someone did that to my coach. You feel that has a lot to do with it, the Caesar Gracie knockout? I think it does to him. I mean, to me, I could, I could care less. I mean, I fought two Gracies, I knocked them both out, you know, one from the top and one from the bottom. So, I mean, to me, it's over. You know, where are they now? Obviously, they're gone. I think it's a new generation of fighters and guys like Nick, young guys that, that are good, well-rounded MMA guys. But to me, it's over, they're done. Well, I want to beat up everybody in mixed martial arts, at least the old guys. And then uh, I want to do some pro boxing. And then I want to get the pro boxers into mixed martial arts. And then, um, I don't know, I don't know what I'll do after that. Probably dancing with the stars or something. Everybody has their own way of expressing themselves. And, you know, I just look at him as a kid who doesn't have the experience or the education to express himself properly. 
And I'm hoping that this fight gives them a bit of, you know, bit of education and a bit of understanding. You know, no old guy should be going out and beating a 25 year old guy. You know, that, that technically shouldn't be happening. He's in his physical prime, he's bigger than me. You know, um, he's got almost as many fights as I do. You know, the truth is he should be beating me. Uh, but he's not. He's not because I'm not going to lay down. I refuse to die. And at the end of the day, I think I believe a little more than he does in what we're doing.